Is yoga satanic or new age, and can it be used as exercise? Yeah. Yoga, historically, or what, what we call yoga uh, in, in the West, is, is typically what in Hinduism is known as hatha yoga. It's actually one of five different yogas or, or major um, paths by which Hindus uh, pursue salvation. Um, hatha yoga refers to physical yoga, and so it's about um, certain meditative postures. You know, we would probably translate in the West as stretching exercises or something. But in, in the actual Hindu religion, it's one of the ways in which one strives for enlightenment. It's, it's in a sense mastering the body to help your mind collapse the duality dichotomy of me and otherness so that I, I, I become aware of the oneness of all reality, including myself. And this, this meditative posture or, or positions helps one do that. Um, typically, it's associated in, in Hinduism also with the chanting of various Hindu deities' names. Um, so it, it is, it comes out of, it is a form of, of, of Hindu um, practice. It's been transplanted to the West. Uh, in certain varieties, it's, it's a, it's a one-to-one -one transplant. You'll actually find yoga classes being offered in which they are practicing Hindu Hatha Yoga. What they're meditating on, the, the syllables they're pronouncing in their mind are the names of Hindu deities. Um, in other spheres, it's been for example, Christianized, where what they're saying isn't uh, the names of Hindu deities to collapse their consciousness, but it's maybe um, substituting it for prayer to God or, or, or praising God or meditating to God in a, in a Christian fashion, uh, and then just doing the physical exercises associated with that. So definitely the roots are in Hinduism. Um, you take it from there. I, I think it's very, very important to... Um, not paint with broad strokes, and not throw the baby out with the bathwater, and to look at individual cases in this sense. Um, there's a world of difference between what a person does, and on the one hand, and how they interpret it on another. Um, for example, the practice of sitting and observing your thoughts. Uh, that can be a, you know, really uh, a, a helpful thing. It can quiet your mind. Just observe your thoughts. I, I actually do this, and, and in, in Zen Buddhism, they call it zazen, it's called, which means sitting. And just to, uh, we're so often not aware of how incessantly our brain talks. And so sometimes just to observe it uh, and, and, and notice it, and it makes you more aware of it. And then I do that while practicing the presence of God. I don't try to judge the thoughts, don't fight them, whatever, I just observe it. Uh, well, if I was doing that in, in, a, in, a, in a Buddhist temple, they'd call that, you know, uh, a Buddhist form of, of worship, or, or of, of yoga. When I'm doing it, it's simply practicing the presence of God. Uh, it's one thing to, to say that a, a certain posture, a certain way of sitting, a certain way of thinking is helpful. It's another thing to say, well, this is a way to become one with uh, whatever particular God, or chanting a deity's name, or anything like that. It's a little bit like with holistic medicine. Uh, does, does is some of the holistic medicine techniques work? Well, you could, there's two issues here. You could say we should answer that by looking at the medical results. Does visualizing yourself overcoming cancer or going through acupuncture or having hands laid on you, are, is there evidence that that works? That's one question. But the interpretation that the reason it works is because you're aligning yourself with your chakras, your energy centers, and bringing that into alignment with the universe, well, that's something totally different. You could embrace the practice if you felt it was actually helpful, uh, but, with, but reject the interpretation. I think yoga is the same way. Now, in the West, we, uh, we, especially in Christian circles, we tend to assume that yoga means the Eastern meaning. But it's possible for a person to do what is often identified as yoga, but give it a totally different kind of meaning. Just, just to end that question, I think an important um, sort, of, sort of criterion to judge whether one is staying in the Judeo-Christian realm of meditation or moving into the Eastern realm of meditation is to realize that those two forms of meditation are almost diametrically opposed. In Judeo-Christian meditation, the word for meditation actually means to mutter to oneself, to, to meditate with your mind intently focused on what you're meditating on, usually scripture or, or God or something like that. In the Eastern uh, realm, 
you're trying to shut your thought down. You're trying to get to the level of no mind. Almost the exact opposite. Uh, so that, that's one way to, to, to kind of stay clear of whether you're, you're moving in the realm of, of Christian thought or, or Eastern pantheistic thought. 